Hey there, Hawkers. Today we are going to be covering the first three games of our home and away season. This one will be a little bit of a rushed video, but from now on we will be posting these weekly uh, and we will also be posting some previews for all of the Hawthorne matches as well. This was originally my plan coming into round one, but I did have some technical difficulties that have now been resolved. So for the purpose of this video, we will skim over our first three matches and give a brief insight uh, into what went wrong and what went well and introduce the Hawthorne HQ medal in which we will pick three of the best Hawks players every week and tally those votes for the award in the classic 3-2-1 Brownlow style. Since we are a small channel this will just be my votes for now but as we do grow we will be including your votes as well so feel free to drop them down below and if we get enough involvement I will also keep a tally for those. Anyway, straight into it, we kicked off our season with a fiery contest against the Essendon Bombers on a scorching hot Saturday afternoon. The first quarter saw Essendon get out to a hot start. They looked really aggressive coming out of the centre bounce and generated the first four inside 50s of the game to put our shaky defence under immense pressure. As the quarter dragged on though, Hawthorne were able to transition the ball from defence to attack with ease as Essendon's defence around the ground looked shocking to say the least. Despite the Bombers getting out to a two-goal head start, thanks to Ginevan and James Warple, we went into the first break down just seven points. The second quarter saw us really put our foot on the gas and put pressure on the Bombers' defence, amassing more inside 50s and marks inside 50s than Essendon for the first half. They really struggled to stop our fast ball movement and we were able to generate many scoring opportunities uh, with our ball dominance unfortunately though our inaccuracy kept us from really piling on any scoreboard pressure and thanks to some late goals to Wright and Menzi we were down four points at half time the third quarter was a very similar story to the second our continued fast ball movement and pressure around the ground saw us get most of our scores coming from Essendon turnovers however a glaring issue was starting to rear its head and that was our center bounce work our most promising aspect of our game in 2023 unfortunately did not carry over to our first hit out of the season and we were comfortably beaten with uh, Essendon winning the center clearance 18 to 9 for the game. Still though the main thorn in our side was our inaccuracy in front of goal and Essendon led at the third break and ultimately secured the win with a 5 goal to 2 fourth quarter as the Hawks just ran out of gas on a 30 degree day. This game was beyond winnable for us. Essendon were genuinely shocking defending the ground, but our inaccuracy and stoppage work was very concerning to say the least. If we had converted our opportunities, this genuinely could have been a five goal win Hawthorne's way. Very uncharacteristic performances from Jack Gunston, Luke Bruce, followed by Wizards unlucky first game were the main factor behind this. However, a lot of other players did miss some easy chances. Anyway, onto the votes. James Warple continued his impressive 2023 with a solid first game this season. In a midfield that ultimately struggled to beat a weaker opposition, he was the silver lining and is deserving of his first vote. We may have had a bad day in front of the sticks, but Dylan Moore was the outlier, contributing three goals, zero behinds in an impressive outing that also saw him amass 17 touches and very deserving of the two votes. Just wanted to give an honourable mention to Jack Ginevan, who had an awesome first half, displaying great work rate up and down the field and two goals to go with it. If he hadn't disappeared in that second half there, I'm sure he would have polled. The first three voter in the 2024 Hawthorne HQ medal is the club debutant Massimo D'Ambrosio. He gathered 29 disposals for the day at 72% efficiency. His class got us out of some very sticky situations in defense and he also looked great going inside 50. This was exactly why we brought him over from Essendon and he proved a great pickup on the day. Now moving on to our second game of the season against the D's, a team we have not fared well against in recent years. In fact, the last time we beat them was in 2018, believe it or not, so let's see how we did. The first quarter was very ugly to say the least. We came into the game wanting to control possession of the ball, which we actually did quite well, amassing a record-breaking 53 marks for the quarter. But this dominance in possession did not translate to any scoreboard pressure, only kicking one behind to Melbourne's five goals three. We recorded an 88% kicking efficiency in our defensive half compared to 50% when it went up forward. The Ds were just able to intercept everything we sent down there and were able to punish us on the rebound as well as from the center bounce, continuing the theme from round one. 
This was very shoddy coaching and was some of the most boring and laughable footy I've seen us play in quite a few years, which is actually saying quite a lot. The second quarter, we were able to wrestle back the momentum and stem the flow of goals that Melbourne were kicking with ease, uh, thanks to some much better defending. We were finally able to put Melbourne on the back foot and looked dangerous transitioning the ball from our back half to our forward 50. We went into half time still losing comfortably by 26 points though. The third quarter saw Melbourne continue their dominance out of the middle, however injuries to Melbourne's two best defenders in Stephen May and Jake Lever had Hawks fans licking their lips hoping Mitch Lewis and Matt Biorchol could capitalise. This never came though, both players ultimately only combined for one goal and three marks inside 50 for the game which is just not good enough. In the end, Melbourne sailed home for a breezy 55 point victory. We looked awful all around the ground this game and I honestly don't have much more to say than that. It was a very much just a men against boys game and I think that this was a reality check for many Hawks fans out there. Now for the votes, kicking us off with one vote is Jack Scrimshaw. He showed his class coming out of defence, getting 26 touches at 92%, which was very impressive. He has clearly gone to work on his composure and ball use over the offseason, and that showed on the day. Two votes go to James Warple with a good showing and yet another disappointing day for our midfield. He was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Petrarca, Oliver and Viney for the most part, and looked our only competitive midfielder with nine inside 50s. Our skipper gets his first votes of the year with a dominant performance in defense. Some might say a lot of his marks and disposals were cheap after that first quarter where we basically just chipped it around, but I thought he displayed a lot of good composure and defensive awareness on a day where it was down that end a lot. Honorable mentions to Josh Weddle and Cam McKenzie. Both played all right and had some good moments, but ultimately didn't do enough to poll. Now to round off the video, our Easter Monday clash had many Hawks fans perhaps a bit more nervous for this fixture after a horror start to the season. Despite key outs in Dangerfield, Tui and Stanley, they did regain the services of Duncan, Atkins and Bruin. In what was Tom Hawkins' 350th game, it was sure that the Cats would be fired up and pumped to get him the win, and early on, it looked like that would be the case. The Cats shot right out of the gates with a 7 goal to 1 quarter, winning it out of the middle practically every time, putting our defence under the pump. The Cats forwards were just feasting on all the opportunities and converted all their chances bar one. Geelong put us under immense pressure with a gauge of 211, which is their most for the season, and our young midfielders just could not cope with it and turned the ball over a lot. The second quarter saw us turn the tides though, flipping the pressure back onto the Cats. We were able to control the ball a lot easier thanks to the likes of Carl Amon, whose ball use was very important, gathering 15 disposals in the first half at 100% efficiency. Cam McKenzie was also playing his best footy for Hawthorne in his short career thus far, kicking his second goal for the game early in the second term. Josh Ward also played a crucial role with three score involvements for the quarter. It wasn't only in attack that we were improving, but also in defence with Sam Frost, Sicily and Blake Hardwick able to spoil or intercept most of the entries coming their way. This was a much more promising quarter overall, and I'm sure Cats fans were nervous for what was to come in the second half. After an early goal to Mabio Troll in the third quarter, the Cats were able to once again shift the momentum their way and went on to kick four unanswered goals and six in total for the term which just completely shut us down, blowing the margin back out to an equal game high 36 points, which ultimately proved too much for us to come back from. After what felt like a 45 minute to an hour delay due to weather conditions, if you include the initial three quarter time break, the Hawks sparked a glimmer of hope with two early goals to Jack Ginevan and Nick Watson, but we just could not get past Geelong's defense in the wet after this, and they went on to beat us by six goals. There were definitely signs of improvement from the Melbourne game against the Cats, but inexperience and an inability to win the ball out of the middle consistently is what lost us this game. Huge performances by Tom Hawkins and Oliver Henry were the result of the constant pressure that came our way from the centre bounce, and if we are going to be competitive against the Pies next week, this is an area that will need to be fixed up. I know that we are missing Will Day, but unfortunately, Jai Newcomb and Connor Nash have had horrible starts to their season, and James Warple has been our only inside mid to show any signs of competitiveness at the contest. 
Now enough of my mini rant, onto the votes. Cam McKenzie picks up his first ever Hawthorne HQ medal vote with a great first half performance, kicking two goals when there was a lot of pressure on us to make the game competitive and he looked very classy with his ball use, deserving enough for a vote. The two votes will go to Mabby or Troll. He was finally able to show us Hawks fans why we brought him over, having his breakout game kicking three for the day. He could have put some real pressure on Geelong in that last quarter if he had kicked his fourth, but we won't dwell on that. He played well against a solid Geelong defense and stood up while Mitch Lewis was mostly uncompetitive. The three votes go to James Warple. This one's a no-brainer to be honest. He was the best on ground from both sides. 36 disposals, 6 clearances, 152 fantasy points and a goal to top it off. That just speaks for itself and he continues his run of polling votes and is establishing himself as one of the league's most informed midfielders to start 2024. Alrighty Hawkers, that is it from me. Sorry for the long video. Now that we will be pumping out weekly reviews, we will keep it short and sweet from now on. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it regardless. Don't forget to throw down your votes for all three games below in the comments and chuck us a like and to subscribe. Any help to grow the channel is appreciated. Hopefully we can kick some Collingwood ass at Gather Round this weekend. Hope to see heaps of Hawks fans at the game. Go Hawks! Hey Hawkers, just as I was finishing editing this video, I noticed that we have actually hit a hundred subscribers on the channel. I uh, can't thank you guys enough for all of the support so far. I love reading your comments and talking to you guys uh, about the Hawks down there. Um, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully we can get a win against the Pies. See ya.